Chicago is where Denali was born. Although I was raised in Alaska, Denali was raised in Chicago. So whoever says that I'm not a Chicago queen, my ass. Can that be, can that be put in at yeah, least? Thank you. Yeah, yes. It's your girl Denali. Welcome to my humble Chicago abode. Donuts here too. Everyone say hi. I'm about to let you on into my space with my crying dog and show you all the accessories I use to cross dress and make a career out of it. Let's go. Let me see what it looks like. Can I see? Adorable. Oh, the plants look good. Uh, action, okay. Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the nipples. Welcome to my kitchen. We got bananas and avocados. If y'all don't know that reference, you're not a vine kid and you're not cool. So, sorry about that. I am a Chicago queen because when I wanted to start doing drag. I was looking up to the individuals in the scene where the generation before me, which was Shay and Trixie and Pearl and Kimchi and these icons of the scene that were just amazing. And I wanted to be just like them. So Chicago's drag is very subversive. It's very all over the place. It is super diverse. And I wanted to be a part of that scene, period, point blank. Sis. So is there an alternate reality where you're about to be your queen? Ew, no. No, there's not. Are you trying to, you're trying to get, you're trying to produce me, you're trying to do aren't you? I love New York Queens. They're great. I love their show tunes and I love Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> My boyfriend was like, if you're gonna do drag professionally and you're gonna live with me, we're gonna have a separate drag room because we have had so many friends where all of a sudden there is a wig on top of the stove and like, just like synthetic hair in a microwave and you're like, wow, and glitter everywhere. So separation of church and state, very important, yeah. Welcome, this is my drag room, as you call it. I actually really barely spend any time in here because I'm just like so busy and I'm like working so much. No, I'm just kidding, but it's mostly just to store my drag. And I just want everybody to know that this is exactly how it looks all the time, okay? My drag room is absolutely not only that clean. Everything that you see is a facade. Uh, in, in the wise words of Tatiana, what did she say? What you might see is not always what it seems, right? What you see isn't always, isn't always the truth. See me with them hands, drag room is never clean. This is, this is how I keep it at all times, pristine. I'm just kidding, it was a disaster yesterday, literally. Uh, do I like organizing my drag? Absolutely not. Like, I truly, if I could have an assistant to just do it all for me, I absolutely would. Um, everything that you're gonna see today or that you have seen in this episode is a complete facade because it's generally just a pile of mountainous cross-dressing tools and glitter and, 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 and despair and sweat. Yeah, and sadness. First things first, I'm the realist. Second thing second, I want you to take a look at one of my most prized possessions. This is one of my favorite, 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 favorite fan gifts. It is a vinyl, an actual vinyl of Crystal Waters, 100% Pure Love. We've got all of the different remixes on it, but it is hand painted like the Quetzal Bird that I lip synced in to this song. I love this so much and I'm just, it's like the first thing I was like, that's going on my door because it has to just like, it has to just like introduce the drag room and I think it's the perfect way to do so, so. Meow, there it is. Painted as the Quetzal. A Quetzal pretzel. Crazy, crazy. I would describe my style as future camp inspired by nature. That's how I would and with a little bit of a cultural Mexican twist. I think that that like encompasses everything about me. I have a lot of really random things about me, but I think that that phrase encompasses my fashion well. I guess we'll start with my hats. This is my collection of hats. It is what I place upon my head. This was my headpiece from the promo look 
you know, we got the prompt and I was like, I want to do something for mi gente, for mis Latinos, mi Mexicanos. And so I did this kind of like floral Mexican braided headpiece. It's giving very like Frida Kahlo and I just like wanted to feel very like traditional in it. Let's get into the Humiancas. Which one's my favorite? This one is new. It's made by Alfred Lewis, who's done some work for like Chez Coulee and everything. Obviously it's new because I haven't even cut the lace, but I just really love the coloring. It's a bit thinner, so like I don't have to like get too crazy with it. I can really, actually I can get crazy with it and I can really like toss it around. This one is like my current fave. I've just worn her on like a War on the Catwalk tour wearing Peter. She's kind of this like caramel fantasy as to why she's a bit frizzy because I like just got off tour. These are more of like the wigs that I wore on the show or like just more my like colorful, crazy fun wig Giancas. So she is actually one of my fave, but she was not featured on the show because RuPaul eliminated my ass. And this was gonna be for my pockets look. And it was a really cute, like, Polly Pocket inspired, like, 90s moment. But I wanted to put, like, butterfly clips all in it. And then I had, like, Tamagotchi earrings. And I was gonna pull out all these 90s items, like, snap bracelets from my pockets and, like, snap them off. It was gonna be a whole presentation, but Drag Race is way harder than I thought it would be. I mean, I, I also, I wasn't friends with a lot of Rue girls before I went on, so I didn't really have like a moment to ask advice and stuff like that. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it was a lot harder and it's just really tiring. And at the end of the day, you know, you just like, you have to understand that this is such a platform and opportunity that you just gotta handle it and take it. I'm not gonna lie, when I was eliminated, there was just this like release of like, there was just oh, so much relief. Cause I was like, oh my God, I don't have to like wake up at 6 a.m. and cry on camera and stuff. <laughs> We've got the one. Actually, okay, let's be honest real fast. This is a recreation of the iconic bird hair. That hair has been through the ringer and no longer even looks like hair or a wig or anything, to be honest, because um, I've, I've been asked to do that lip sync a few times. And so this is a recreation for it. It has a few of these spikies that have fallen a little bit, but for the most part, it's really gorge and it's more of just like this like big old rocker style version of the iconic bird hair. That is the Ketzel bird hair. It kind of was just like a prerequisite. Like I was like, I kind of have to. No, I do enjoy the fashion of it. I just like, I do drag to be on stage. I do drag to perform. I am a dancer, I am a performer, that's why I do it. I want to please the people. But I do like the fashion aspect of it. It's not why I do drag, but I do enjoy it. It is kind of just like, you know, the sprinkles to the ice cream that is drag for me versus like the whole thing. So yeah, I guess they do. So Donut has been lonely, so she wants to say hi to everybody. She is a international superstar, an icon, a legend. She smells her own farts and she is afraid of being alone. But we're gonna transition to the closet and she wants to come do it with us, so why not? These are all of the shoes that I do not wear. I am a dancer, I'm a performer, and I basically wear four pairs of heels that uh, can support a man doing a backflip in a wig. So um, yeah, it's basically just this row and the rest are decoration, as you can see, because they've been kind of tarnished. These ones I wore in grass. I had to wear these in grass at a college show. This is drag, so. Yeah, don't you think it's all glamour? These were my promo heels, gorgeous, gorgeous heels, hand sprayed by Joshua Naponte. I loved, loved, loved that look. But yeah, the rest of these are mostly just things I've worn once and then never again. <laughs> when I went on Drag Race, I had nothing but dance costumes because I was just a dancer. I was just the dancer girl. It's basically all I still have. Just a little more expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all know. <laughs> so this is like my small closet. This is where I mostly just keep like the like go-to dance costumes when I'm about to go to like Sao Paulo and I need a quick little like cha-cha dress. But I figured we should start with the one that I've used and abused the most, which as everybody knows is the bird look. Be nice to me, okay? This bodysuit is two years old and she has been all over the world. So here is the iconic Ketzel bird bodysuit and look. She has a lot of feathers and a lot of them are falling off. It's iconic and I don't care what you say. Did I just tear one off the bust? Yes, I did. 
That look was conceptualized between me and my friend Jay for Pay. We were in my living room and we were thinking of all these different things. We had all these ideas. I wanted to be a bride and I wanted to have this long train that was like lifted in the air by balloons. Imagine trying to do that on Drag Race. No, not gonna happen. Either way, we saw on a screensaver this image of this beautiful Quetzal bird with this long natural train. And I was like, oh my God, that's so gorgeous. And then we did some more research and we realized, you know, oh my God, this is another way to like loop in my Mexican culture. So we had the look created by Joshua and who killed it. This is the one that I sent home Kamora in, all of the trauma. And then of course, I got to lip sync to my favorite song and have basically my favorite moment from Drag Race on it. And the fact that it was done in one of my like stronger looks, I'm actually really happy because everything worked out. And it was this like cool like bird versus dragon animal like Pokemon character battle like royale. It was like such a moment. Like really, it was like so fierce. Yeah. So she might have had this nice, expensive, gorgeous gold dragon look, but I had this and that's all I needed. It was great. <laughs> Here's a little tea. When I realized I was about to lip sync, it's attached to me, right? And it was the train's runway. And I was like, in no way am I gonna be caught having this train on me the whole time while I lip sync. So I actually like unfastened it and I just held my hands like on my hips. And if you see at the beginning of that lip sync, my hands are just like on my hips and it looks like I'm posing, but I'm actually holding up the train because it's not attached to anything. So the second that the music started, that's why I was like, it's off and I'm ready to go. And I was like, not struggling with it. Do I consider myself a fashion queen? I mean, honestly, no, but I do enjoy it and I enjoy learning about it more and I'm enjoying starting to kind of like take references from more fashion and educating myself on it. Especially because like it is an integral part of everything now, whether it's in pop music or movies or just pop culture in general. And now I'm definitely starting to enjoy it a lot more. Oh, I have to show you all this. Now I'm just being a kid and like, uh, like, mommy, let me show you my show and tell. Like this is one of my favorite looks ever. It is a completely head to toe, hand sewn glass beaded jumpsuit, disco jumpsuit. And I, I think it probably weighs about like 40 or 50 pounds. <laughs> it's literally so heavy. But before girl, I just wanted to put on my little sequenced gown and you know, shake my little cha cha dress, do a backflip for the kids and make them gag. That was the point of my drag. I tried to backflip from this once and it slapped me in the face so hard, literally almost lost a tooth. So yeah. Who needs a nose job when you can just get slapped by glass beads? Um, oh my God, my diner girl look. Okay, so this is my little diner girl look. I was like, I wanna do something that like I can actually skate in. And so I was like, what if I was a little roller girl and it was for the Fascinator runway. And I had this coffee pot thing that was like suspended on my head. And I didn't think about how I was gonna like literally wear this on Drag Race until I got there. And I was like, wait a minute, I have to like install this into my wig and then put it on onto my head. This is 3D printed by the way. That's really everything. I, I can show you my snake look. My yellow runway was not my favorite, but it was my own fault. I love the work that Josh Ron had done for that. Josh Ron Aponte made that look, but I had insisted that we needed the silhouette to be a cat suit because I already had gowns, which was not true. I think I had only had like two in the package and I should have just left it a gown because I think that would have been a little almost sexier. This was for the yellow runway. Not my favorite runway, like in terms of how I presented it. I also did not course it in that look because I think it was a challenge that I was really afraid of and I didn't think I did well in and so I thought I was gonna lip sync so I didn't wear the corset and I should have worn the corset. But you know, I'm really proud of that look and the details in it were really cool. I, again, the like snake skin prints, the custom airbrushing, everything about it. But it, I was in the top this week as well, which I'm very proud of and it was a really fun time. So yeah, that's my pineapple. I had to expand into the outdoor space because I have so much drag now, you know? And it didn't have that much until I got on the show. Let's get into some of the bigger drags. So this is where some of my favorite pieces live. It is my Home Depot lighting extravaganza realness moment where I proclaimed that I have a sexual fetish for lamps. Um, yeah, so I have a fetish for lamps and I just really like 
sexy lighting equipment. And that was like me embodying my fetish. Um, yeah, I love chandeliers. I don't know, I've literally loved them since I was a kid. It is one of my favorite things I've ever worn and is hand sewn and created by Joshua Aponte. I'm just obsessed with it, like truly, it is amazing, and I'm really proud of it, and it's probably my favorite thing that I wore on the show. Definitely my favorite runway. Shout out to all my Home Depot gays that grew up and went to either the paint section or the chandelier section because they were the prettiest. You were gay, and you liked pretty things, and that's okay. This was the unaired beast look made by the incredible Edda Birthing from Turkey, but it is this basically like psychedelic pregnant alien look that has these legs coming out of the hips. It is so cool and one of my favorite looks and I'm so sad that I didn't get to wear it. But I low-key wish that I would have um, worn it and then done bad in that like commercial challenge and then had to lip sync to my humps in this because there's literally so many humps that I could have my humped. And I think it'd have been really fun to just be like, what you gonna do with all that junk? All that junk inside your trunk. Like, come on, imagine. This would've been so fun. Also, I would've won that lip sync and sent Tina home. Ah. I'm just kidding. From what I showed on the show, low-key, I'm sure that they were not expecting too much. I think a lot of people hype my fashions a lot more than they should have. <laughs> I was such a baby queen, you know? I was I was two years in the game, not even. Obviously, the first time you ever saw me was in this gorgeous ostrich feather ballerina moment where I shaded Lala and I regret. I don't regret anything on Gyrex except for shading Lala that first episode because she's truly an angel sweetheart goddess of this earth. I don't know, I was just so mean. And just look, also one of my favorites, Ice Queen. I was like, okay, let me come out strong with the branding. Little did I know I would have to lip sync that. It is absolutely not a lip sync look and it kept slipping down the whole time. I still own the skates, but miss me with ever being on Drag Race and ice skates again, because that was so traumatic. Everyone was like, why didn't you change into heels? Girl, we hadn't moved into the workroom until episode three. So uh, that's all I had, and I was like, this is what's happening. My God, it hurt my soul so much, I still need to apologize to the figure skating community for clomping around in ice skates without safety guards on metal floor. It like hurts my soul to this day. Oh my God. I had many a sleepless night thinking about that episode. I'm not kidding. Well, you cut up the work before. I sure did. And it's their own goddamn fault. You didn't warn me. You know, even making it halfway through, lasting 10 episodes on like my favorite television show ever. And, and, and coming out of it, not only alive, but like with a positive fan reception and stuff like that. Like, oh my God, I'm beyond proud. And I'm like really, I'm really grateful for the fans. I came home and I was so disappointed with how I did. And I was like, oh my God, no one's gonna like me and everything. But I'm really grateful that people took the time to kind of like get to know me online and stuff. Um, I'm doing a lot more international travel this year. I'm gonna be heading to Puerto Rico soon and um, Brazil again later in Australia. I'm gonna be going back on tour. I'm gonna be doing a lot more projects next year with music, which I'm really excited. I wanna start music and I just wanna con continue to like grow and push the limit for like what I can do on stage with dancers, with music, with performers, everything. So that's what's next for me. And who knows, maybe one day I'll return to All Stars. But for now, I'm still working on me. So yeah. Ping. Chicago forever? Who knows? The sky is the limit. And I don't think you should ever limit yourself to like where you should live, but Chicago for me right now is the perfect escape for my crazy life. It is community, it is a sanctuary, it is home, it is friends, it is family, and it's love. And I don't feel like I'll find that anywhere just yet. I definitely could, but the other cities seem like work to me, and this right now is home, so yeah. I love Chicago. <laughs> Wow, what a beautiful four bedroom apartment, but you only got to see a little bit of it. Take that, New York. You could never. Truly, y'all, thank you so much for joining me on this amazing tour. You only got to see a few pieces, but there's gonna be many more to come, I promise. Thank you so much, I love you guys. Um, and you know, Willow Pill lives right across the street, so I think I'm gonna go have some brunch with her. Maybe go to Six Flags, maybe get some cotton candy. I don't know, but we're gonna have a good day. I love you so much, and I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, it's Michelle Visage. Do you want gay shit? Check out RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube channel and hit subscribe.